Chapter 17. My interview aired yesterday on Diane Carey's Friday Night News special. This morning, John the producer called and said it's one of the most watched interviews in the network's history. A millionaire who wishes to remain anonymous offered to pay my college tuition. John said the offer was made right after the interview aired. I think it's Oprah, but that's just me because I've always imagined she's my fairy godmother and one day she'll come to my house saying, you get a car. The network's already got a bunch of emails in support of me. I haven't seen any of them, but I received the best message in a text from Kenya. About time you spoke out. Don't let this fame go to your head, though. The interview trended online. When I looked this morning, people were still talking about it. Black Twitter and Tumblr have my back. Some assholes want me dead. King's not too happy either. Kenya told me he's heated that I dry snitched. The Saturday news programs discussed the interview, dissecting my words like the president or something. This one new network is outraged by my disregard for cops. I'm not sure how they got that out of the interview. It's not like I was on some NWA fuck the police type shit. I simply said I'd ask the man if he wished he shot me too. I don't care. I'm not apologizing for how I feel. People can say what they want. But it's Saturday, and I'm sitting in a Rolls Royce on my way to prom with a boyfriend who isn't saying much of anything to me. Chris is more interested in his phone. You look nice, I tell him, which he does. His black tux with light blue vest and tie match the strapless T-length gown I have on. His black leather Chuck Taylors are also a good match to my silver sequined ones. The dictator, a.k.a. my mom, bought my outfit. She has pretty good taste. Chris says, thanks, you too. But it's so robotic like he's saying what he's supposed to and not what he wants to. And how does he know what I look like? He's barely looked at me since he picked me up from Uncle Carlos's house. I have no clue what's wrong with him. Things have been fine between us as far as I know. Now, out of nowhere, he's all moody and silent. I would ask the driver to take me back to Uncle Carlos's, but I look too cute to go home. The driveway at the country club is lit with blue lights and golden balloon arches hang over it. We're in the only Rolls Royce among a sea of limos, so of course people look when we pull up to the entrance. The driver opens the door for us. Mr. Silent climbs out first and actually helps me out. Our classmates whoop and cheer and whistle. Chris wraps his arm around my waist and we smile for pictures, like everything's all good. Chris takes my hand and wordlessly escorts me inside. Loud music greets us. Chandeliers and flashing party lights light up the ballroom. Some committee decided the theme should be Midnight in Paris, so there's a huge Eiffel Tower made out of Christmas lights. Looks like just about every junior and senior at Williamson is on the dance floor. Let me say it, a Garden Heights party and a Williamson party are two very different things. At Big D's party, people nay-nayed, hit the quan, twerked and stuff. At the prom, I honestly don't know what the hell some of them are doing. Lots of jumping and fist pumping and attempts at twerking. It's not bad, just different. Way different. It's weird, though. I'm not as hesitant to dance here as I was at Big D's party. Like I said, at Williamson, I'm cool by default because I'm black. I can go out there and do a silly dance move I made up and everyone will think it's the new thing. White people assume all black people are experts on trends and shit. There's no way in hell I'd try that at a Garden Heights party, though. You make a fool of yourself one time and that's it. Everybody in the neighborhood will know and nobody will forget. In Garden Heights, I learned to be dope by watching. At Williamson, I put my learned dopeness on display. I'm not even that dope, but these white kids think I am, and that goes a long way in high school politics. I start to ask Chris if he wants to dance, but he lets my hand go and heads towards some of his boys. Why did I come to the prom again? Star! Somebody calls. I look around a couple of times and finally spot Maya waving at me from a table. Girly! She says when I get there. You look so good. I know Chris went crazy when he saw you. No, he nearly drove me crazy. Thanks, I say and give her a once over. She's wearing a pink knee length strapless dress. A pair of sparkly silver stilettos gives her about five more inches of height. I applaud her for making it this far in them. I hate heels. But if anybody's looking good tonight, it's you. You clean up nice, shorty. Don't call me that, especially since she who must not be named gave gave me that nickname. Damn. She Voldemorted Haley. Maya, you don't have to take sides, you know. She's the one not speaking to us, remember? Haley's been on some silent treatment shit since the incident at Maya's house. I mean, damn, I call you out on something, so I'm wrong and deserve the cold shoulder? Nah, she's not guilt-tripping me like that. 
And when Maya admitted to Haley, she told me why Haley unfollowed my Tumblr. Haley stopped speaking to Maya, claiming she won't talk to either of us until we apologize. She's not used to both of us turning on her like this. Whatever. She and Chris can form a club for all I care. Call it the Silent Treatment League of Young Rich Brats. I'm in my feelings just a tad. I hate that Maya got pulled into it, though. Maya, I'm sorry. No need, she says. Don't know if I told you, but I brought up the cat thing to her after I told her about Tumblr. Really? Yeah, and she told me to get over it. Maya shakes her head. I'm still mad at myself for letting her say it in the first place. Yeah, I'm mad at myself too. We get quiet. Maya nudges my side. Hey, we minorities have to stick together, remember? I chuckle. Okay, okay. Where's Ryan? Getting some snacks. He looks good tonight if I say so myself. Where's your guy? Don't know, I say, and don't care at this moment. The beautiful thing about best friends, they can tell when you don't want to talk, and they don't push it. Maya hooks her arm through mine. Come on, I did not get dressed up to stand around. We head for the dance floor and jump and fist pump along with the rest of them. Maya takes those heels off and barefoots it. Jess, Britt, and some of the other girls from the team join us, and we make our own little dancing circle. We lose our minds when my cousin through marriage, Beyonce, comes on. I swear I'm related to Jay-Z somehow. Same last name. We have to be. We sing loudly with Cousin Bay until we almost go hoarse, and Maya and I are really into it. I may not have Khalil, Natasha, or even Haley, but I have Maya. She's enough. After six songs, we head back to our table, our arms draped around each other. I carry one of Maya's shoes, and the other one dangles from her wrist by the strap. Did you see Mr. Warren do the robot? Maya asks between laughs. Did I? I didn't know he had it in him. Maya stops. She looks around without looking at anything at all. Don't look, but look to the left. She mutters. The hell? Which one is it? Look to the left, she says through her teeth, but quickly. Haley and Luke are arm in arm in the entrance, posing for pictures. And I can't even throw shade. With her golden white dress and his white tux, they're cute. I mean, just because we've got beef doesn't mean I can't compliment her, you know? I'm even happy she's with Luke. It took long enough. Haley and Luke walk in our direction, but brush right past us. Her shoulder, a couple of inches away from mine, she flashes a stank eye. This chick, I probably shoot one back. Sometimes I give stank eye and don't realize I'm giving them. Yeah, that's right, Maya says to Haley's back. You better keep walking. Lord, Maya can go from zero to 100 a little too quick. Let's get something to drink, I say, pulling her with me, before you hurt yourself. We get some punch and join Ryan at our table. He's stuffing his face with finger sandwiches and meatballs, crumbs falling on his tux. Where y'all been? He asks. Dancing, Maya says. She steals one of his shrimp. You didn't eat all day, did you? Nope. I was about to starve to death, he nods at me. What's up, black girlfriend? We joke around about the whole only two black kids in the class are supposed to date thing. What's up, black boyfriend? I say and steal a shrimp too. What do you know? Chris remembers he came with somebody and walks over to our table. He says hey to Maya and Ryan, then asks me, you want to take pictures or something? His tone is all robotic again. On a scale of one to ten on the I'm done meter, I'm at about a 50. No thanks. I tell him, I'm not taking pictures with somebody who doesn't want to be here with me. He sighs. Why do you have to have an attitude? Me? You're the one giving me the cold shoulder. Damn it, Star. Do you want to take a fucking picture or not? The dun meter blows up. Kaboom, blown to pieces. Hell no. Go take one and shove it up your ass. I march off, ignoring Maya's calls for me to come back. Chris follows me. He tries to grab my arm, but I snatch away and keep walking. It's dark outside, but I easily find the Rolls Royce parked along the driveway. The chauffeur isn't around, or otherwise I would ask him to take me home. I hop in the back and lock the doors. Chris knocks on the window. Star, come on. He puts his hands against the window like they're binoculars, and he's trying to look through the tint. Can we talk? Oh, now you want to talk to me. You're the one who wouldn't talk to me. He bows his head, pressing his forehead against the glass. Why didn't you tell me you were the witness they've been talking about? He asks it softly, but it's hard as a sucker punch in the gut. He knows. I unlock the door and scoot over. Chris climbs in next to me. How did you find out? I ask. The interview? Watched it with my parents. They didn't show my face, though. I knew your voice, Star. And then they showed the back of you as you walked with that interview lady. And I've watched you walk away enough to know what you look like from the back. And I sound like a pervert, don't I? So you knew me by my ass? I, yeah. His face goes red. 
But that wasn't all. Everything made sense. Like how upset you got about the protest and about Khalil. Not that that wasn't stuff to get upset about, because it was, but it... He sighs. I'm sinking here, Star. I just knew it was you. And it was, wasn't it? I nod. Babe, you should have told me. Why would you keep something like that from me? I tilt my head. Wow. I saw someone get murdered and you're acting like a brat because I didn't tell you? I didn't mean it like that. But you think about that for a second, I say. Tonight, you could hardly say two words to me because I didn't tell you about one of the worst experiences of my life. You ever seen somebody die? No. I've seen it twice. And I didn't know that, he says. I'm your boyfriend and I didn't know any of that. He looks at me, the same hurt in his eyes like there was when I snatched my hands away weeks ago. This is the whole part of your life you've kept from me, Star. We've been together over a year now, and you've never mentioned Khalil, who you claim was your best friend, or this other person you saw die. You didn't trust me enough to tell me. My breath catches. It's it's not like that. Really? He says. Then what is it like? What are we? Just fresh prints and fooling around? No. My lips tremble, and my voice is small. I, I can't share that part of me here, Chris. Why not? Because, I croak, people use it against me. Either I'm poor Star who saw her friend get killed in the drive-by, or Star the charity case who lives in the ghetto. That's how the teachers act. Okay, I get not telling people around school, he says, but I'm not them. I would never use that against you. You once told me I'm the only person you could be yourself around at Williamson, but the truth is you still didn't trust me. I'm one second away from ugly crying. You're right, I say. I didn't trust you. I didn't want you to just see me as the girl from the ghetto. You didn't even give me the chance to prove you wrong. I want to be there for you. You got to let me in. God, being two different people is exhausting. I've taught myself to speak with two different voices and only say certain things around certain people. I've mastered it. As much as I say I don't have to choose which star I am with Chris, maybe without realizing it, I have to an extent. Part of me feels like I can't exist around people like him. I am not going to cry. I am not going to cry. I am not going to cry. Please, he says. That does it. Everything starts spilling out. I was 10 when my other friend died. I say, starting staring at the French tips on my nails. She was 10 too. What was her name? He asks. Natasha. It was a drive-by. It's one of the reasons my parents put me and my brothers in Williamson. It was the closest they could get to protecting us a little more. They bust their butts for us to go to that school. Chris doesn't say anything. I don't need him to. I take a shaky breath and look around. You don't know how crazy it is that I'm even sitting in this car. I say, a Rolls freaking Royce? I used to live in the projects in a one-bedroom apartment I shared the room with my brothers, and my parents slept on a fold-out couch. The details of life back then are suddenly fresh. The apartment smelled like cigarettes all the damn time, I say. Daddy smoked. Our neighbors above us and next to us smoked. I had so many asthma attacks, it ain't funny. We only kept canned goods in the cabinets because of rats and roaches. Summers were always too hot and winters too cold. We had to wear coats inside and outside. Sometimes, Daddy sold food stamps to buy clothes for us, I say. He couldn't get a job for the longest time because he's an ex-con. When he got hired at the grocery store, he took us to Taco Bell, and we ordered whatever we wanted. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world, almost better than the day we moved out the projects. Chris cracks a small smile. Taco Bell is pretty awesome. Yeah, I look at my hands again. He let Khalil come with us to Taco Bell. We were struggling, but Khalil was like our charity case. Everybody knew his mama was a crackhead. I feel the tears coming. Fuck, I'm sick of this. We were real close back then. He was my first kiss, first crush. Before he died, we weren't as close anymore. I mean, I hadn't seen him in months, and... I'm ugly crying and it's killing me because he was going through so much shit and I wasn't there for him anymore. Chris thumbs my tears away. You can't blame yourself. But I do, I say. I could have stopped him from selling drugs. Then people wouldn't be calling him a thug and I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I wanted to, but everybody who knows I was in the car acts like I'm made out of glass. You treated me normal. You were my normal. I'm an absolute mess right now. Chris takes my hand and pulls me into his lap, so I'm straddling him. I bury my face in his shoulder and cry like a big-ass baby. His tux is wet. My makeup is ruined. Awful. I'm sorry, he says, rubbing my back. I was an ass tonight. You were, but you're my ass. I've been watching myself walk away. I look at him and seriously punch his arm. 
he laughs to the sound and the sound of it makes me laugh. You know what I mean? You're my normal and that's all that matters. All that matters, he smiles. I hold his cheek and let my lips reintroduce themselves to his. Chris's are soft and perfect. They taste like fruit punch, too. Chris pulls back with a gentle tug to my bottom lip. He presses his forehead against mine and looks at me. I love you. The I has appeared. My response is easy. I love you, too. Two loud knocks against the window startles us. Seven presses his face against the glass. Y'all bet not be doing nothing. The best way to get turned all the way off? Have your brother show up. Seven, leave them alone, Layla whines behind him. We were about to dance, remember? That can wait. I gotta make sure he's not getting some from my sister. You won't get any if you don't stop acting so ridiculous, she says. I don't care. Star, get out this car. I ain't playing. Chris laughs into my bare shoulder. Did your dad tell him to keep an eye on you? Knowing daddy. Probably so. He kisses my shoulder and his lips linger there for a few seconds. Are we good now? I peck him back on the lips. We're good. Good. Let's go dance. We get out the car and Seven yells about us sneaking off and threatens to tell Daddy. Layla pulls him back inside and he says, and if she puts push out a little Chris in nine months, we gonna have a problem, partner. Ridiculous. re damn ridiculous. The music is still bumping inside. I try not to laugh as Chris really does turn the nay-nay into a no-no. Maya and Ryan join us on the dance floor and they give me these what the hell looks at Chris's moves. I shrug and go with it. Toward the end of a song, Chris leans down to my ears and says, I'll be right back. He disappears into the crowd. I don't think anything of it until about a minute later when his voice comes over the speaker and he's next to the DJ in the booth. Hey, everybody, he says. My girl and I had a fight earlier. Oh, Lord. He's telling all of our business. I look at my chucks and shield my face. And I wanted to do this song, our song, to show you how much I love you and care about you. Fresh princess. A bunch of girls go, aww. His boys whoop and cheer. I'm thinking, please don't let him sing. Please. But there's this familiar boom, 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 boom. Now, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, Chris raps. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, and I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. I smile way too hard. Our song. I rap along with him, and mostly everyone joins in, even the teachers. At the end, I cheer louder than anybody. Chris comes back down, and we laugh and hug and kiss. Then we talk, and then we dance and take silly selfies, flooding dashboards and timelines around the world. When prom is over, we let Maya, Ryan, Jess, and some of our other friends ride with us to the IHOP. Everybody has somebody on their lap. At IHOP, we eat way too many pancakes and dance to songs on the jukebox. I don't think about Khalil or Natasha. It's one of the best nights of my life.